This has to be the real cartridge, though even now I don't know what to think of it just yet. Everything so far has just been weird glitches, and now the game just throws a whole new world at me? I guess I'll move on to the board. Arbitrium's board is orange, and it looks a lot like the Earth board, but some of the spaces seem to be missing. From what I can see, the three new level types are a gravestone, a shell, and a volcano. I think I'll go to the grave icon first. The grave icon is... a graveyard. Pretty obvious, I know. It's a pretty dreary looking level, and as you can see, there are graves all over the level. I can't really interact with them, but I can just barely see some scribbles on them that look a bit like names. The music, if you can even call it that, uh, sounds more like breathing. I guess it's fitting with the environment, but I'd be lying if I said it made me comfortable. The stage enemies are these angry ghosts, and they attack by stabbing you with their arms. They don't do much damage on their own, but they can get pretty damn annoying when they attack you in groups. Now there's fog rising from below. I don't have a good feeling about this. The fog is covering the screen, making it a bit difficult to see what's going on. The screen darkening doesn't help either. Hopefully the exit is near. Duh! What the hell? This giant hand just grabbed Mothra and is pulling her down. I'm pressing every button I can on the controller I'm using, but she she's just not coming free! Well, how's that for a warm welcome? Literally the first level of this entirely new world, and I've already lost one of my two playable monsters. <sighs> Alright, I'll play as Godzilla next, but I am not going anywhere near those graveyard levels for a while. Turns out the shell icon is a beach, and it looks a lot more pleasant than the grave level. The music, I, in contrast I suppose, is rather melancholy. Even though there aren't any enemies, there are a lot of shells and fish parts littering this place. It's not really comforting, is the word I would use. Oh, huh. well, this caught me off guard. This weird flying circle thing just flew in from the right side of the screen and immediately attacked Godzilla. I guess it's a mini-boss? Well, uh, as for this abrupt mini-boss fight itself, the boss's attack pattern isn't much. You already saw one of his attacks in the earlier screen cap where he'll charge at you with one of his drills, but you can easily duck under that, as I later learned. His other attack is pictured in this screenshot where he'll shoot these very weirdly arcing projectiles out of its eye. Uh, how they work is that sometimes they'll go up at a point and you have to crouch under them at that point. Other than that, they don't really have much other than that. After some struggling for a while, he eventually went down after a heat beam attack. After the body fell down, the eye detached from it and started floating until... And Gylus? And Jill- I, I don't think I've ever seen this guy in the original game before. I'll give him a try in the next level. And Gylus plays much like Godzilla, though he's significantly more faster and has a different looking heat beam that is narrower than Godzilla's. He seems promising so far, though I'm still pissed about losing Mothra. As for the volcano level, it's quite different to what I expected. I'm on a small platform in a huge lava lake. I suppose this level takes place inside the volcano, but other than that, there's not much I can say about the level. I can't really go anywhere beyond the platform, so I guess I'll wait around to see what happens. After a minute of waiting, this huge monster came out of the lava. Even though I was practically waiting for something to happen, this still took me by surprise. Not to mention the fact that its sprite looks unlike anything I've seen on the NES before. It kind of looks like one of those CGI rendered images that was used for games like Donkey Kong Country. This mini-boss tends to duck under the lava a lot, and one of two things will happen. The first thing is pictured in the screenshot here, where these fire enemies from the original game will start surrounding Angylus, and it's pretty damn hard to kill the ones out of reach from your basic punches and kicks, and in case you're wondering, it is impossible to walk off the platform. However, the enemies themselves don't take too much punishment, as well as the fact that some of them drop health capsules, so I guess it isn't too unbearable. The other attack is where this fire dragon will leap out of the lava right over your head, which you can only dodge by crouching. It's pretty damn fast too, I think there were a few times I was blindsided by it even when anticipating the attack. After one of those happened, 
The mini boss will rise back up from the lava. It's pretty immobile, relying on touch damage rather than actual attacks. And since punching and kicking don't count as touch damage, he's pretty easy to wail on, all things considered. Alas, poor volcano monster. I knew him well, and he shall be missed. Now, after I defeated that mini boss, I came up with an idea. Rather than go fight the peace bosses and end the world, I was going to go to one of the graveyard levels with Godzilla. Now, doing something like this may be a little too out of whack, especially considering what's happened with Mothra, but I'm far too curious as to just leave something like this be. However, if that fog starts rising again, I won't waste a second trying to haul ass. Rather than the stage progressing like normal, there was a new grave here, which has a question mark on it. I have a feeling this will be another boss fight. Yep, that's another mini boss. Much like the mini bosses before it, the graveyard mini boss has two attacks. One of them is where he uses his tail to call in some ghosts to attack Godzilla, as shown in the screen cap, and the other one where he lashes out his tongue at you. Oddly, this seems to be the only time where you can properly lay in some hits on him. If I sound like I don't have much to say about this fight, well, I don't, because the whole time I was anticipating for him to use one of his hands to drag me down, but oddly, he never did. Which I guess makes sense since he's preoccupied behind that grave, but even still, the fact that he was able to take down Mothra so easily and I was able to defeat him anyhow, it's just a little off to me. Oh yeah, by the way, did I forget to mention that I won? Yeah, um, since that's taken care of, why don't we go fight those bosses now, eh? When I started the fight against Mogira here, a little versus screen showed up that shows the monsters, their health and levels, and what I assume is an EXP bar. Weird that I don't see any EXP bars in the levels, but oh well. Mogira himself is not too different than how he was in the original game. Except for the fact, uh that, you know, he's fucking huge now. Uh, he'll walk back and forth and shoot those three projectiles repeatedly. You can't corner him like you originally could, but at the very least the projectiles are easy to dodge since your heights don't really line up. Though it's not really wise to just keep wailing on him because he also has this other attack where he'll kick you across the screen taking up a decent chunk of your health. Even though it's telegraphed, it still caught me surprised by the first time. The next boss is... Manila. That's weird. Why am I fighting the son of Godzilla as Godzilla? Why is Manila even a boss in the first place? I can only imagine this going poorly. Entering the fight, Manila's just standing there, not attacking. And on top of him, there seems to be this weird arm looming over him. What's going on here? And all of a sudden, Manila had taken on this bizarre new form. This deformed version of Manila has an extremely frantic boss fight, because while he doesn't do a whole lot of damage, he makes up for it in being extremely fast, which also makes it easy for him to randomly bum-rush you when you least expect it. As for Manila's moveset itself, his attacks are... odd. His first attack is shown here in the screen cap, where he'll extend his bony arm to punch and or scratch you, usually while jumping. He also has this attack where he'll extend his neck towards you, which can be practically unavoidable if he uses it too close to you. The only other attack he has is where he'll continuously shoot his eyes at you and regenerate them. The only option here is to crouch, since you'll always be open to this attack if you're standing up. Hell, you can still get hit by this attack even if you're crouching. Once I completely emptied Manila's health bar, he left. Rather than sinking to the bottom of the screen, he just crawled onto the wall, I guess, and crawled away. What a weird boss. Now that all the bosses are defeated, all that's left to do is enter the base level. Here goes. The base level, much like the volcano level, is much different than what I expected. I'm in some sort of desert with a volcano in the background. The enemies here are various satellite dishes that don't move, but come in two different types. The smaller ones are just obstacles, while the larger ones shoot lasers at you. 
The timer is 1 minute and 30 seconds, so I'd better get through this level fast. I don't know if I'll have a second chance at this. I'm glad that my health has regenerated, since this level would be a lost cause otherwise. Going through the level end. Is that Angylus? What is he doing here? No time to think about it now. There's less than a minute for me. At the end of the level is some sort of structure, with Angylus peeking out. There are some enemies from the previous levels rushing towards the door, along with three creatures I've never seen before. Only a few seconds left, so all I have to do is go inside. Once the timer runs out, the structure closes up and lifts off. I guess it's a spaceship of some sort? When the spaceship leaves the screen, this cutscene plays... Once the cutscene ends, I'm sent back to the main menu. I think I'm gonna turn the game off for now. So far, things have definitely been interesting, and a bit creepy at times, but nothing too malicious. So far. I feel like I've only scratched the surface of this game so far. But for now, I'm gonna take a break to think things over.